Oh, hello everyone, it's Susie from Hysteric Trading Solutions. I hope you're all well. I've been sick in bed for about 10 days. I came back from uh, Amsterdam to Australia for a wedding and had this flu for about 10 days, which has been really, really bad. But anyway, I just want to um, do a short YouTube and the bulk of this um, video will be in Flex Chimp uh, about an exchange that's supported by the XRP community and I'll probably get a lot of criticism about this but I always tell things as I see it I always tell the truth as I see it and in terms of my research and it's it's an exchange that's being uh, supported by a lot of the XRP community because they get paid to support this exchange and this is where there's always a, a, a credibility issue if a YouTube is getting paid for something then they're obviously you know if they don't have any integrity they're basically going to say you know this is a good exchange when it may not be a good exchange okay and that's always a danger <coughs> um, uh, it is a real credibility issue and as I said before in other markets in other fiat markets you're not allowed to do it with the retail investor um, it, it's basically illegal and as I said before you would be put in jail if you're receiving commissions or payments or their coins or anything else to tell the retail investor or to encourage the re retail investor to, to basically invest in the exchange in the exchange's reward system or you know to actually utilize the exchange now I have got a problem with this exchange because as I said before there's many red flags I do not support it just because they operate an XRP validator doesn't mean the exchange is safe, doesn't mean it gives credibility to the exchange. Anyone can operate an XRP, XRP validator, anyone. I can, you can, anyone. Just because I decide to operate an XRP validator, Ripple doesn't give me the credibility that I'm a bona fide good uh, operator, I'm a good actor. Uh, Ripple doesn't do like, you know, they're not responsible for my balance sheet, my financials going forward or how I operate. They do not give me the credibility, okay? That's, that's the most important issue you have to be aware of here. So just because this exchange operates a validator of XRP, it doesn't give them credibility, you know? And this is the whole problem with other YouTubers out there. A lot of them don't even know what they're talking about, right? And yet the whole community, you know, or people like you give them money and then you basically, you know, backstab me because I'm asking for a dollar or two somewhere else because I've got experience and expertise and I know what I'm talking about because I've been around for 40 years in markets, right? And, you know, I had one little young punk say, oh, you're whinging again about money. Well, you know what? You pay for skill. You pay for skill set. If you don't pay for it, you get you get blown up in this market. It's not alone trying to find the right coins. But then, if you listen to, you know, YouTubers that actually have a bias for you to lose money so that they can make money, and that's wrong and that's illegal. Okay. So you know, I will. You know, people have to pay for the expertise. So. Um, you know, on YouTube, I'll put half a video on there, and if you want to come and watch the rest of it on the other channel, that on the other system, that's fine. If you don't want to pay for it, then you run the risk of listening to YouTubers that don't have the experience, don't know what they're talking about, and basically, you know, you listen to them and get, get encouraged by them, and it's not the right thing, okay? Look at their resume compared to mine. It's just that simple. Look at their experience compared to mine. That simple. Go on to LinkedIn and check out their experience check out their qualifications and check out their experience in markets they will not have the experience and the qualifications i've got in markets okay i know what i'm talking about and that's a fact you know and for a dollar to save yourself money is is absolutely nothing in the scheme of things seriously absolutely nothing <coughs> also i will emphasize if a youtube is getting paid money from a coin or an ICO or an exchange, they should be telling you, they should be disclosing that to the retail investor you. You should know so that every word that comes out of their mouth is biased because they're being paid for it, okay? Now, I do not take money from anyone, 
right? I don't take money for I you know the amount of people that I've had come to me from different exchanges wanting me to say this exchange is a great product, that's great, this ICO, this coin, whatever, I have not taken one cent from anyone because I always want to maintain my integrity. I'm too professional to do that. I will not do it. I know it's not allowed and I won't perjure myself ever for money. Okay? Now some people obviously in America that see that money is the most important thing. In my mind, money is not. People are the more, most important thing. Now, if you've got a bunch, of you, a bunch of viewers out there that give me flack and think that I'm stupid, well, I tell you, I've got news for you. I think you're stupid because if you think it's right for people to take money off other people and then tell people lies, where do, where do your morals come from? Seriously. So don't give me a hard time about it because it's not done in other markets and it's illegal, okay? Absolutely illegal. Right, so now we've got that straight, let's start this off like we normally do. Hello everyone, it's Susie here from Esoteric Trading Solutions. I hope you're all well, I hope you're looking after your animals, I hope you're looking after your family and your friends. Family are very important and friends, please look after yourself as well. More than 3,000 people in Australia suicide a year, so that's what I mean by that. Please look after your animals, your putty cats, your beautiful dogs. You know, animal cruelty is huge in the world, so please be kind to your animals, and that's what I mean by that. Please look after your, <coughs> after your fellow citizen, because people die in their houses every day and people don't even know that they're dead, you know. I mean, what sort of world do we have here? And please be kind to people, because honestly, the amount of horrible people in the world these days that they can they can hide behind YouTube and say some horrible things, emails and things like that, I just want to strangle them. You know, everyone suffers in this world. You know, and most people are poor in this world. Four billion people out of seven billion are poor. You know, there's only 2,000 billionaires in the world. Only 2,000 billionaires. The only wealth of 4.1 billion people in the world out of seven. Most people are living in poverty. In Australia, it's getting worse. And yet you get horrible people being horrible. You know, what is that about? Seriously, and I, when I say these things, I generally, generally mean them, okay? Honestly, whether you think I'm raining or not, just turn me off. I don't care. But if I get anyone on my YouTubes, you know, commenting and giving me bad whatever, I'm just going to delete you, man or girl, whatever. I don't put up with this crap. I don't take any prisoners, not these days, okay? I've just had a birthday. And honestly, I'm just sick of horrible people. Seriously, fed up with it, man. So let's go to the next slide um, here. And um, basically the topic that I want to discuss here, which really does bother me, and I have brought it up before, I've mentioned it to people, is uh, what I want to bring up is BitTrue. And um, it's an exchange that I'm pretty concerned about. I see a lot of red flags uh, with BitTrue. And I have mentioned it before to people, and I did cop a lot of flack from it, okay? Uh, the first thing I'll say, and there will be a lot more in this in this presentation, but I'm not going to put it all on YouTube, okay? So if you want to see the rest of it, it's going to cost you, you know, a pound, 50 cents or something, not even $2, you know, not even a cup of coffee to see the rest of this. But, um, you know, the first thing I'll say, as I said before, is just because they run an XRP validator doesn't validate be true as a company or as an exchange or as a good operator or as a good actor within the system of the network of Ripple, okay? It doesn't validate them, doesn't give them credibility. As I said, anyone can run an exchange. Joe Smith, the fish and chip, fish and chip shop down the road, all right? That's really important, and we'll cover that point later on in this presentation. Okay. <coughs> What concerns me about BitTrue are there are many, many red flags. And if I see a lot of red flags, I don't need to be there. It's just that simple, okay? Uh, in Crunchbase, which is a corporate database, BitTrue is not found in there. That's always my first red flag, okay? You can look up any of this stuff. Uh, everything I say, you can actually cross-reference it and go and check it because I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't come out with crap. I actually tell you the truth and you can go and cross-reference it. Not like other YouTubers out there that just say stuff and don't even have any, uh, you know, evidence to it. Again, um, they also call themselves BitApple, and that's not found any anywhere in the Crunch 
uh, database either, the Crunchbase uh, e either, the database, and I cannot find them registered anywhere. Okay, now normally a company is going to be registered somewhere, but I can't find this company registered anywhere. When you look at their website security certificate, uh, and you know, you look at their website address in Singapore, they're actually called Bit Apple Singapore Pty Ltd. So if you put money with BitTrue, <coughs> but the company's Bit Bit Apple, where does your security lie? Let's put it that way. If you've got if you're an investor in BitTrue, where does your security lie? I ask you the question, if the company is called Bit Apple. You know what I'm saying? So basically, technically speaking, the money's sitting with Bit Apple, not BitTrue. Uh, as an investor, you don't have a lot of protection, okay? You don't have a lot of a protection. If you look up the address, um, you know, you'll see this company has been incorporated not very long ago, uh, in 2nd of March 2018. But again, BitApple, as I said, BitApple and BitTrue are two different entities. Where would, your, where would the investor recourse be if BitTrue went down? We already know that BitTrue's had a $5.3 million scam. It's only a new operation and yet it's had a $5.3 million scam, which tells me basically it doesn't have any security. It doesn't have security, full stop, okay? Um, if you look at this, and again, you can look this stuff up. You know, you've got Bit, Bit Apple Singapore here, Bit True. You know, it's just weird. And I can't find that registered anywhere either, by the way. Anywhere, and on a Singapore registry, which always bothers me. And again, these are all red flags. There's over on... Um, um, what is it? Capital markets, uh, you know, within um, coin markets. There's basically on there about 280 uh, exchanges, but globally there's about 9,000 exchanges. I don't need to be with this company. <coughs> there's 9,000 exchanges. I don't need to be with one exchange that has all these red flags, okay? And that barely does any volume. Barely does any volume. And they've been picked up in the past for, uh, for, uh, putting up volume that doesn't exist, okay? So they've been beefing up their volume and it doesn't exist fraudulently, okay? So again, I don't need to be with this company, okay? You've got to ask yourself, how can they afford to pay 7.3% on XRP when they're not doing any volume, they're not making any money? Exchanges make money by the transactions that go through and by the fees, okay? Fees and transactions, they're not doing any fees or transactions. How how do they make any money? Think about it. All right, think about it. We go further along here. <coughs> um, is it just telling you more that, that it's Bit Apple and it's, it's not listed on any website or anything else for that matter? If we go to if we go to number six. Where where is the exchange located? You know, um, Iris Chu, who's the marketing person, who I met in Amsterdam. It, it seems that they're operating out of China, okay? Now, when she contacted me, she sent me this, Super Tom M. Finn, and yet she's supposed to be from Bit, Bitru, okay? So she sent me another email, which was from Bitru. So again, her email was this, this, and this, but also it was irischu at bitru.com. So I'm questioning why is she sending me two different you know, emails from two different areas. You've got to ask yourself, what's going on here? Why is she sending an email from this company and then from BitTrue? This is unusual. This is another red flag to me, okay? You know, if you look up Super Tom Finn, it's in China and Indonesia. You know, what is it and who are they? Again, every question I have, every time I keep digging more and more into this exchange, I keep getting more and more red flags, okay? There's another one. Bit true. That's her original email, and then I've got this one here. So what, what's happening here? Every time I go into it, I get more questions. You know, the address they've given us in Singapore, you know, it looks like this is a big office block, um, you know, and it's very hard to find the physical presence of Bit true. I've got a friend that lives in Singapore, and I've asked them to check out Bit true, and they can't find the physical premise of Bit true. Some people say, oh, yeah, well, maybe they're operating in the cloud. Fair enough. But you do need a registered office to where the mail goes, okay? The physical mail. Mail is still physical, whether you like it or not, most mail. Yes, you can get it delivered, you know, your bills to some of the computer and whatever, you know, through, through your email. But there's got to be an office where people come in 
to say, hello, can I open up an account, you know, sit down with a client person, like any other exchange, okay? <coughs> there has to be a physical premise, right? Just for the old-fashioned stuff of shaking someone's hands, looking them in the eye, you know, and the physical mail, which still operates and still exists, right? So I've asked my friend who lives in Singapore to find out where this entity is, and they can't find out, they can't see a physical presence for Bitru in Singapore. Again, for me, for me, another red flag. I don't need to be there. You know, the cryptocurrency market, 99% of it's a scam, okay? It's hard enough the market goes down, right? And you've got a market going down. The last thing you want to be is, is coins that are scams to add to it and in exchange it could potentially be the same, all right? You just don't need to be there because you're taking on more and more risk, right? More and more risk and you don't need to be there. You see what I'm saying? So if we go to, and I'm not going to give you all this video, okay? Because if you don't value my service, you don't think it's worth two bucks, well, don't pay for it. That's fine. You know, but you're not going to, you don't see, get to see all my stuff because, you know, it's for my clients on Slack, which again, is my, as, as I said, my membership for a year is 550 US. We do all sorts of things. We do reviews on coins, you know, whatever your client wants. We do review on exchanges. We do technicals. We trade. We do everything. We've got a model portfolio. We do everything. My service is not expensive and I work my guts out. 18 hour days, right? And it's worth it because you don't know what you don't know, you guys. And there is just so much to learn. You could be learning for two or three years and still not know what I know. You know, you just don't know what you don't know. That's what I'm trying to say to you. There are so many risks in cryptocurrency markets, more risks than other markets all put together. Seriously. Anyway, <coughs> so let's go forward. So 10, they give us another address, a Taiwanese address, this address, A3F blah, blah, blah. And I go, okay, fine. But then I realize I look up that address and I find... It's an address of Cheetah Mobile, which is exactly the same address. So everything I check becomes another question. So again, who are Cheetah Mobile? Then I look at the back LinkedIn profiles of Iris and Curtis and a few other people, and it turns out they worked for Cheetah Mobile. Okay, from be true before that, they all worked for Cheetah Mobile. Okay, so the people of Bitru worked for Cheetah Mobile and they're using the same address located in Taipei, city of Taiwan. Now, Taiwan still is officially uh, a state or whatever you want to call it, a state or a country of China. So there's country risk. Okay, they still operate under the umbrella of China, even though they've been trying to get independence for years and years and years. So effectively, you have country risk. Okay, strong country risk. You may not get your money out either way and you're fighting with China, okay, as an investor because you just got so many red flags here. All right, we've got number 11. So I do an accompanying search of Tyron at the Tyron Department of Commerce website and I find nothing to be true and then I find something on Cheetah about a fraud, okay. Um, then I go do a search on who is search. <coughs> Of their name and it shows that they're registered this is this is a bit true they're registered to go daddy um, host service for a website and again go daddy is you know my father used to use go daddy when, when he was a pensioner and he could barely afford to you know register a website I mean seriously this is for the internet you know is it the worst uh, internet site you could ever go on I mean how can our supposedly exchange be using go daddy uh, for their internet uh, connection. That just is nuts, right? For me, that's another red flag. More and every time I look at something on this, I come up with more and more red flags, okay? It just bothers me. So they're registered to a GoDaddy, you know? Um, come on, man, that's just crazy. Then, <coughs> you know, I go to another thing where I'm trying to look up who they are. Uh, in Taiwan, and I can't find them. You know, I can't find Bitru in Taiwan either. Okay, 
obviously the Cheetah Mobile, they've got a connection then. And then I then I go, sorry, let's go back again, sorry. Then I also, what is this? My mobile always goes on at the wrong time. Then I um, find a story here, XRP right now, who is Pitra and who is Kuris Wang. And then I find this, July 2014, Cheetah Mobile encouraged users to uninstall Google Chrome and replace with Cheetah Mobile's own browsing during clean mouse's cleanup and optimization process. This practice allowed Cheetah Mobile to gain unfair position in the marketplace and led to a Google crackdown in December 2018. Cheetah Mobile was implicated in a massive click fraud scheme, leading Google to remove two of its apps from its Play Store. Cheetah Mobile has denied the charges. So again, Curious Rowang and all the people that work for Cheetah Mobile, which are a part of BitTrue, were up for fraud charges in a fraudless scheme, okay, where they acquired clients uh, fraudulently and Google were re forced to remove some apps because of Cheetah Mobile. You know, again, this is a red flag to me, another red flag, and yet the, the, the XRP community support BitTrue because they're getting paid for it. You know, so you guys that are investing in BitTru are losing, are going to lose money, and that's a fact. You know, you may not believe me, but look, the thing is, whether they go down or not, for me, when there's so many other exchanges out there, I don't need to be there. When there's other exchanges out there that are much more secure, I don't need to be with this exchange. I'm trying to mitigate my risk in trading in the overall, in the overall uh, cryptocurrency market okay I'm trying to reduce my risk so I don't need to be somewhere like this so <coughs> if we go to Cheetah Mobile who are they they're an internet company headquartered in Beijing okay so they're quite big by the looks of it um, um, so they operate out of Beijing so again um, they connect so basically you as an investor are effectively invested in you know, Taiwan slash China. So you've basically got huge country risk of being invested in Taiwan slash China. So if anything happens, you're not going to be able to get your money out. 17, more red flags. Um, if you take a look at any business that's registered in Taipei, on their website, um, you always have company numbers. Since requirements certainly in the UK, US and Australia and Japan when you're selling to um, these investors in these countries, UK, US. If you look at BitTrue's website, they don't have any company numbers at all. And to me, that's a red red flag. All they have is TNC, you know, and honestly, <coughs> that's not regular either, okay? To me, everything I look at with BitTrue is not regular and reeks to me of something that smells seriously. If I go to 18, Okay, in this story here, under www.coinintelligence.com, exchanges, underscore list, be true. <coughs> and you can look this up. It said the report, uh, the volumes report was estimated by some sources that BitTrue represents some fake volume numbers, while others say see very little daily volume. Okay, that is a concern. They report fake volume numbers. And their volume numbers are very little. If the volume numbers are very little, how does the exchange, think about it, make money? How do they pay that 7.3% on their piggy bank? How do they do that? How do they offer the rewards? You know, when I went to the um, Amsterdam meetup meeting, they told me that the fees, the 7.3% comes out of their budgeting budget. 7.3% interest that pays you guys or girls. That is not a sustainable story, full stop. You cannot pay interest out of your marketing budget. That's a joke, man. It's not sustainable. It's a red flag, a big one. BitTrue's Power Piggy, <coughs> which allows users to gain interest on their crypto, would grant them more points. But if BitTrue made a good job explaining how it assures customers their funds will be 100% secure, something we very much doubt something we very much doubt. Look this up, coinintelligence.com. Since what allows BitTrue to pay its users such interest is probably the fact they loan out themselves, but on the other hand, offer no insurance for their assets under custody. Okay, now Coinbase have insurance. 
for us it's under custody you know so does Gemini so does Binance a lot of the big exchanges do but you with your XRP going to Bitru and you're earning 7.3 percent per annum big deal is it worth it is 7.3% per annum worth the risk that you could lose your XRP completely you have to ask that question honestly for me I would not do it I think you've got rocks in your head rocks in your head man and you won't even pay me a dollar or two bucks you know fair income fair income what can I say crikey you got to be mad you got rocks in your head babes and girls rocks in your head all right so and then the next thing I find lo and behold is the domains up for sale yeah the domains up for sale and I can prove it to you as, as we go forward I'll show you more stuff anyway that's all I'm going to tell you if you want to see the rest on um, Flixchimp fine and you'll see the rest of it okay so you can see the rest of this video it's on www.flixchimp.com um, basically all you need to do is open up an account the video will be up there for two pound which it's probably about two thirty dollars two dollars thirty US which is bugger all if you're trying to protect your investments it's really up to you guys uh, so you just open up an account and you'll see this video on there so if we go to the next thing and we're